what up all right all right all right so today is going to be an educational video and we're going to talk about chf congestive heart failure we're going to dive right in my last video was another cardiac disease and as promised i continued on to another cardiac disease so that we can sort of maintain this momentum but i will gradually begin to move into other major systems such as the pulmonary the nephrology which is the kidney I'm not gonna dive too much into a whole bunch of other stuff. Just know we will continue on with this process of going through major organs or major disease processes. Again, CHF, congestive heart failure. So congestive heart failure is the heart's inability to effectively pump blood and evenly distribute it. So the heart's purpose is to bring deoxygenated blood from the body and send it to the lungs via the pulmonary artery to become oxygenated. So with CHF, unfortunately, as it's coming from the body via the vena cava, the heart's inability to effectively pump it and distribute it to where it's going to go causes a backup. And since it's coming from the body, the backup is going to be in the body. And what fluid does is it sinks. And so, we, as humans, we typically are either sitting, walking, standing. We don't spend 90% of our day laying down. So the fluid typically builds up in the bilateral lower extremities, AKA your legs. So that's when people with CHF often have edematous legs. Edema is swelling. And so when I say edematous legs, I mean swollen legs, legs that are full of fluid in the interstitial space. So that's that third space where fluid goes because it doesn't have anywhere else to go, simply put. And again, that is what happens with CHF. What causes it? Typically a poor diet, a buildup of lipids. So foods that are high in fats. Lipids clog the arteries, unfortunately. And so then it makes it harder for the heart or makes the heart work harder, therefore making it harder for the heart to effectively pump the blood through these arteries that are beginning to get filled with plaque due to a poor diet. There are other lifestyle, I guess, habits that contribute to having CHF, such as smoking, and again, poor diet, specifically the lipids, a sedentary lifestyle, not necessarily putting your heart to work. Again, y'all, you have to remember the heart is a muscle. So when you don't necessarily make it work harder than the average, harder than it typically has to work, you're not really strengthening it. And so you're sort of making it susceptible to certain diseases. It's the same with your immune system. It's the same with any other muscle group. You do not work it out. You do not take good care of it. And it makes it easier for it to be to become weaker. And that's what happens in CHF. Um, some people are predisposed. Some people don't even necessarily have to lead a poor lifestyle. If their family has a lengthy history of cardiac disease, unfortunately, you are at a higher risk. And so that then would be something that the doctor would say, you need to do more cardio and decrease your chances, decrease your risk of developing heart disease. Doing cardio strengthens your heart. So there are things that are done to slow the progression of CHF, but there isn't necessarily anything that can cure it. Speaking from a medical standpoint, number one, a heart healthy diet, foods that are low in triglycerides and fats, foods that do not contribute to clogging those arteries. So that is something that the doctor will chit chat with you about when and or if you are at a point in your life where you are at a higher risk of developing CHF. Smoking cessation. If you smoke, that is another thing that we will advise you bring an end to so that we can stop putting as much pressure on your heart. There is also medications, a drug class called diuretics. 
Now remember, I did explain that CHF is unfortunately the buildup of fluid in the body because of the heart's inability to effectively pump that fluid to where it needs to go. <clears throat> so it's almost like you're trying to pour something out of a cup and the spout is partially cut off, or excuse me, not cut off, but blocked. And so instead of all of that fluid nicely flowing out, only some of it is flowing out. And so the rest of it just inevitably ends up staying in the container and the container is going to remain heavy. And that's what's happening with CHF. The fluid that's supposed to be evenly pumped via the heart and distributed to where it needs to go to get oxygenated and to then be distributed to other organs, it's weak. And so it can't do so. And so the fluid backs up. And that is what we need diuretics for. The diuretics is what strips your body those cells of excess fluid. It sucks it out and pulls it into the excretory system, the urinary system, the urology system. I don't know if I said that right. Urology? Oh, yeah, I did. And it then forces you to excrete it that way. And so a lot of times what will happen is CHF patients will be encouraged to check their weight. I'm sure that you guys have heard of the term water weight. Unfortunately, CHF patients do deal with excess water weight because of the backup of fluid. I keep saying that because that's essentially how it's categorized. And so when patients are putting on weight and putting on weight and putting on weight, that's something that the doctor needs to know because then we have to adjust your diuretic medication. We have to adjust the medications that we're giving you to help excrete the excess fluid in the body, out of the body. We also genuinely need to talk to you about your diet so that we can prevent that buildup of the fluid, or excuse me, the plaque in the arteries. Hmm, what else can I talk to you guys about as far as CHF is concerned? I'm really just trying to do a very surface, very blanket discussion about it so that it can be simplified. I know I use a lot of terms. The purpose of using those terms is to help those that are in nursing school understand those terms um, because they will be utilized often in a lot of healthcare facilities. I just advise everybody from now, regardless of your age, to do as much as you can tolerate. You tolerate a little bit now, later you'll be able to tolerate a little bit more and more and more. You have to start somewhere, but wherever you start, it is a good start because it's a preventative measure Please keep that in mind. I hope that all of my talking and yapping and the rambling did lead to you being able to jot down some vital information. Um, the next time we talk, we're probably going to dive into some medications. We're going to talk about hypertension. And with hypertension, the focus is on the medication, monitoring your blood pressure and monitoring the medication and making sure that there is a nice connection. You know, we are at the right dose. Your blood pressure remains stable. You're golden. Anyways, that's for the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Please ask me questions. I'm here.